Welcome to Award Force Academy, a place where we will share helpful tips, tricks, and best practices. All right, today's topic is time saving ideas for effective program management. My name is Carl, your host, and I'm very happy to be delivering today's topic. By the end of this presentation, I hope you can walk away with some helpful tips on how you can save time by using features and functions available to you in your awards platform. Today we'll be covering the following topics. Customizing list views, quick filters and actions, save views and custom exports, and saving judges time, and all this in roughly 40 minutes. You can ask questions using the chat feature. However, I will address any questions near the end of this presentation. If I am unable to address any questions, we will get back to you personally. Our first topic today is customizing your list views. Program managers often ask us for better and faster ways to find information within entries. It's not uncommon for program managers to either preview entries or edit entries to locate the information they need. And this could be fine for the odd spot checking exercise. They may even export all entries to a spreadsheet. But what about when you need to do all this info? What about when you need to see all this information across many entries and you want to do it within your awards platform and to do it efficiently? What can be done to save all that time? Some common scenarios not too dissimilar from what many program managers need to do can include to compare data in one field with data in another, getting the name and contact number of referees so program managers can contact them, to find all entries that have agreed to showcasing their entry in a public gallery and more. Let's take a look in Award Force to see what options we have which will help us use our time more efficiently with performing tasks like these. What we can see here from the Manage Entries list view are a bunch of what we call columns. Now you'd be quite familiar with these columns if you have an Award Force program yourself. We have information like the ID of an entry, the name of an entry, the status being submitted or in progress and more. These columns, however, what you might not know is that you can customize your view to suit your working needs. So for example, at the top, you can click and drag these columns around in any order that you like. The other thing you can do is you can turn the visibility on and off of these columns too, to suit whatever it is that you're trying to do at that time. If you happen to notice, like on my screen, a plus sign on the far left-hand side of an entry, that means that you have hidden columns, information that you can't currently see on your screen because your screen space might be too small. Expanding the expander icon here is going to reveal the information that you can't currently see. Okay, now we're going to run a scenario. First of all, we want to clean up our columns so we can see information that's relevant to us. And we're going to run two scenarios. One is we want to see a referee name and contact number so that as a program manager, we can contact that referee to validate something. And we're also going to have a look for all entries that have um, given permission to showcasing their entries in the public gallery. To do that, focusing on our referees first, at the top left of our list views, we can see there's this cog. Clicking that cog is going to reveal a list of all of the fields that you have in your system based on the view that we're looking at right now. I'm looking at manage entries, which means I can see all of the information or fields that I've created that appear during entries, as well as user information. Now, a part of my entry form is asking who a referee is. So I've got some fields called ref, and I'm asking for first name, last name, and contact number within that. Now I'm going to select these fields by clicking the check boxes here and clicking save. This is going to update my view and add that information to my columns. Now we can see if I expand my plus sign over here, that information has in fact been added, but it's out of view. It's not very helpful. So I'm going to clean up my columns. I'm going to remove information I don't need to see. So I don't need that season information right now. I do not need any of this category ID or short code or parent category information. And I don't need to see my updated info. Now my columns will update and I'm gonna have a nice clean list. Fantastic, much easier to work with. 
Now, I also want to just move these columns over here to suit a working need. So I'm gonna have referee first name, last name, and contact number in a position that's just gonna help me work the way I like to work. Excellent. So that straight away is going to reduce the amount of time you need to access the, inf the information. You don't have to go into an entry to get that. You don't have to export or download or view a PDF or anything of the sort. Let's move to the next scenario where we want to have a look at the response from entrants within their entry about showing their entry in a public facing gallery. So first of all, I do not need my ref fields anymore. So I'm going to turn those ones off. And I have a field that I've called authorize. Here it is, I'm gonna turn that on. So what I'm gonna see now are the responses within entries where they have said yes or no, or maybe no answer at all yet about showing their entry in a public gallery. Here's my authorized column and I can see their responses. I can see someone who's not finished their um, response yet. And I can also see people who have said no. There are a few considerations with customizing your list views, and they include any customizations you make to your list view will only affect your view. All other program managers in your team have the same options to customize their view without it affecting yours. If you happen to add more columns than what your screen space will allow, you will see an expander icon. Clicking the expander icon will reveal the information that is out of view. Consider making your browser either full screen so you can view all those, all that information um, within all columns possible, or hide and show only the relevant columns that you need using that cog. You can also reset your columns back to their original setting. Okay, so now we know how easy it is to view information within entries without having to preview, edit, or even export all that data. The next logical thing we need to do is find out how we can save even more time by performing various actions in bulk. This brings us to our next topic of quick filters and actions. Leading from our previous example of finding entries that have said yes to using their entries in a public gallery, we now want to tag all these entries so we have complete control over which entries are featured in the public gallery. But we want to do this quickly, saving time and effort. This means we do not want to select individually each authorized entry and then tag them. Rather, we want to select all the entries at once and then tag them. Selecting one entry at a time will be very repetitive, prone to human error and laborious. So a nice little feature we have in Award Force allows you to set a field as searchable. This means the selected field set as searchable will be available via your advanced search filter. Let's see how we can use this to reduce the time it takes to apply an action such as tagging in bulk. Okay, so here we have again our list and we have this authorized information over here and we want to find all of the entries that have said yes and yes only. Over here at the top right of our screen, we have an advanced search filter and many of you are already very familiar with this. What you might not know though, is that we can actually add fields of our choosing to this advanced search filter. Right now, I want this authorized field to be a searchable field over here in my advanced filter. Right now, it's not. So we're gonna turn it on. To do that, we come to the settings menu. We click into our fields. We can search for our field. I happen to have it just sitting here. Then in the middle column, we scroll to the bottom and we turn the searchable setting on and then save. So right now that's being saved. And now when I go back to my manage entries list view, that field will become a searchable field for me. So I can now find all of the entries in the system that have said yes to showing their entries in a public facing gallery. That goes from 56 entries total down to 34. So I have 34 users or entries to be more precise in the system that says, yes, you can show my entry in some type of public format. 
The next part of the scenario was to tag. This is a bulk action. So we don't want to come through and select these entries individually. Rather, we want to select all 34 entries at once and tag them at once. Now, first of all, before we do that, over here in the top right corner, we can see that we can only see 10 of my results right now. As it says, displaying one of 10 of 34. Now that's fine. We could go through and select our entries and then navigate through a pagination down the bottom here and then repeat that process. But again, that's just adding more time to the, to the task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change how many results per page I get from the default of 10 up to 100. Now in this scenario, I've only got 34 entries. Um, so in this case, I could choose 50 or whatever, but I just like to go for maximum um, and have everything revealed. Now I can choose this select all checkbox at the top left of my, view, my list view. I'm just going to select every single one of those entries. Then at the very top, we have this bulk action menu. So anything that we select here is going to be affected when we choose a bulk action. In this case, I want a tag. So I'm gonna choose my tag option. I'm going to apply a tag I've already created called gallery yes. And everything I've got selected, when I click that tag button, is going to apply it to all selected entries. So by using a combination of a searchable field to find all of the entries, expanding our uh, list view to maximum, selecting all tags and applying a tag, that only takes a few short seconds to do, saving ourselves potentially a lot of time. Okay. All right, so how good is that, right? And how much time can we save ourselves when using a combination of searchable fields, increasing page results, and bulk actions? Let's take a slightly closer look at searchable fields and learn a little bit more about the behavior of these searchable fields. Some considerations include, you can have up to three custom searchable fields at a time. You can reconfigure your searchable fields to suit your working needs. Searchable fields only apply to the manage entries and user list views depending on the field resource type. Let's now take a look at setting a user resource field as being searchable and how this can be used to find users who have opted in for a monthly newsletter during registration. This time we're going to be working from the users menu. The users list is going to produce, of course, all of our registered users. What I'm, going, what I'm going to do first of all is add to my columns here, the newsletter field, that is the newsletter subscription field that I am asking during registration. This just helps me see the information on hand. Now, just if I need to, I've got this mobile column, I don't really need it, I'm not using it, so I'm just gonna take it out of my view. just cleaning up my list. Now I can see my newsletter subscription field and all of the people that have said yes and those that have said no. Once again, I want the newsletter subscription custom field to appear in my advanced search filter so I can find all of the people that have said yes. So once again, we're gonna to come to the settings menu, click into fields. We will find our newsletter subscription field. As you can see, this is a user resource field, so it appears during registration. We click on our field to edit, scroll to the bottom, and turn the searchable setting on. We click save. Then when we go back to our users menu, it will be available to us. So I'm gonna click on my advanced search filter. Here's my field. I click into my list, choose an option, and search. So we go from 64 registered users down to 35 registered users. I can now choose to export this list and use it in a mailing list because they've opted in for it. Well, excellent. I hope you have been able to get some great ideas and tips from what I've been able to show you so far. Our next topic is saved views and custom exports. While it's easy to use the advanced search filter to find information based on specific criteria, 
we still recognize the effort of performing these tasks, especially in a repetitive situation. That is when you need to perform the same search over and over again and over time. So we have another time saving solution for you, which we call save views. Once you have applied a filter, you can have the filter or save the filter, I should say, for reuse and even share it with others in your team. Let's take a look at how we do this. Okay, so over in Award Force, we're gonna to go to our Manage Entries view. And when my page loads, there we go, coming up. What we're going to do is we wanna find entries in my program based on some specific criteria. So we're going to apply a filter first of all. I'm going to clear any previous filters, just starting from scratch. Okay. All right, when I click into my advanced search filter, I wanna find all entries that are in our the Oceana chapter in this case, and in the employee of the year category, and have the status of submitted. So that's the criteria I'm looking for. I'm gonna click the search option. This is going to reveal a list of entries that meet that criteria. Now, as I said before, this is something that I want to save. So at the bottom of the advanced search filter, we have a save view option. Clicking on save view, and then I need to scroll down in my case because I've got a small screen, is going to reveal an option to save my current view. Now it's very important that you first of all, select your criteria and search. You must apply the search before you click the save view, otherwise it's not going to work. In this case, I'm going to find or create this and call it Oceana Employee Submitted. And I'm going to make it shared so that everyone in my program management team can also use this filter. Once I save this, it's going to be available to me to use. So to demonstrate, I'm just going to, once again, reset my list. And then I'll go back to my advanced search filter. We can see nothing's applied here at the moment, but I wanna find all those entries in the chapter of Oceana in the category employee of the year that are submitted. So here's my save view, I'm gonna simply click on it. Now the great thing here is that it runs fresh every time. So if more entries are actually submitted within with that criteria, it runs fresh and I'll get all the new entries each time. Okay, let's run another scenario. We're gonna have another search view here. What we wanna do is find all entries that are in the system that have said, yes, they have social media. Um, but are also in uh, the chapter of Europe. So we can change our filter. We go come up here and go, all right, show me everything in Europe. And I'm just gonna clear these options and under authorize, we're gonna say yes and click search. So this is going to give me a new list and once I apply it, which I've done now, so everything in Europe that have said, yes, public use is permitted. Or in fact, actually what I'm looking for is social media. So I've got the wrong thing here. What I wanna do is I wanna have a look at all of the entries that have social media listed in their entries. So I'm gonna choose that just to see the response first. And I can't see it because my screen's a bit small, so I'm gonna turn off authorize. Okay, there we go. So what I'm looking for here is people who are saying yes to having social media. So I'm just gonna reset my search filter once again and we're going to make our social media field, this one here, searchable, which is currently not. So once again, we're gonna to come to search, uh, settings, fields. We can find our field, this one here I've, I've got in my system called, do you have social media? I'm gonna turn it on as being searchable. Now I'll be able to go and find all of the entries that are in the Europe chapter that have said yes to having social media. So now I'll, I'll apply that 
Europe. Do you have social media? Yes. And search. Okay, now I've got 11 results. That's what I'm looking for. Now this is something I want to run again and again. So I'm going to save the view. And then I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this EU plus social media. I'll make it shared so everyone in my team can utilize this. Okay, so now I'll be able to, once again, reset, just running the scenario of I need to find the, all the entries that are in Europe that have social media. So I can come to my advanced search filter, I scroll to the bottom, I click on my save view, and I'll get my results. Excellent. We have now quickly and easily reproduced, reproduced a list using saved views, which saves us even more time. Something else that is quite common is the need to export data out of your awards platform and into spreadsheets. For example, you might need to export information and hand it over to another department for analysis or processing. If this is something you need to do, ensure you have express permission from your users to process the information outside of your awards platform. Let's use the following scenario. Let's say your marketing department needs to collect all the different social media channels entrants have listed in their entries. And this is perhaps something you need to do frequently to ensure the most up-to-date list. You can create a reusable custom export just for this purpose. Let's see how. So I'm gonna go back over to our awards platform and I'm just gonna reset everything starting from scratch again. Now, before we apply any type of filters or anything, let's take a look at what we have in our export drop-down menu option. The entries is what we're focusing on, on at the moment. If I were to export this at the moment, I would get the following result. This is an example of information from all entries in my program. If I have the scenario where I need to provide only the social media channels and I use this approach, this is fine, but there's a fair bit of cleaning up I'd need to do. I might need to come in and remove a lot of information that is just simply not relevant for my marketing team. All they really want as, as I scroll across is this information coming into view now, the social media platforms that have been listed by the entrants in their entry. So there's a fair bit of work ahead of us if we just do a standard export. However, in our export menu, we have an option to create a custom export. That means that I can control what information is actually exported. Let's take a look at what, how to create one. There's this new button. Clicking on that, when you click on export, you have the option to create a new custom export. Clicking this is going to take you to another page, allowing you to create that custom export. So what you need to do is you need to give it a name. I recommend that you give it a descriptive name based on its purpose. There's also an area of the system. So depending on where you come from, I've come from manage entries in this case. So it's already pre-selected the entries area, meaning all the information that's available within entries. If I happen to, for example, change to a different area, it's going to determine the type of information that's going to be available in my export. Now I'm still working with entries, so I want to come back and that's going to determine what's available in this export. I can also set this uh, export to either be private to me only, or I can set it as being shared so everyone in my team can utilize it. Over here on the right, we have a list of all of the current fields that are available. We can choose to remove fields that we don't want in that custom export, and we can choose to add information that we do want in that export. You can clear everything and start from scratch if you prefer, or you can add everything and work the other way around and just remove information that you don't want, depending on your needs. You can also control the order. That is, when we look at the export, we have all of these columns, entry ID, category short code, and so on. 
changing the order here by dragging these around will determine the position in that export. Okay, now I've got a custom export that I've created earlier. So let's take a look at my configuration, which I've called social media list. I'm gonna click on my overflow menu and then click edit. So we can see I've got a name, the area of the system, I'm sharing it with everyone in my team. And here we've got a much smaller list of information that I'm pulling from those entries. I want to know a little bit about the chapter, the category the entry is in, the entry information itself, including it being submitted or not, who the registered user is, and any social media channels that they may have listed. Great, so with that done, if I was to run my custom export, I would end up getting the following results. So this is a much cleaner list now. We can see I've got my chapter and category information, entry and entrant information, as well as those social media uh, columns that I wanted to have in this custom export. However, looking at this, there's still too much info in here. I've got all the entries and not all entries have social media channels, at least not listed. So maybe the marketing team only want entries that have social media channels listed and not the ones they don't. So to reduce the amount of work ahead of ourselves here again, well, we can use a combination of searchable fields and the custom export. So this time, if I use my saved search, or oh, sorry, my do you have social media um, searchable fields, if I say yes to that, it's going to give me a list of all users, or sorry, and entries that have said, yes, I have social media. There's 25 results in this case. So now when I use this export option, plus my custom export, it's going to give me this result. So again, this is a lot more purposeful. I'm only exporting the information that is relevant based on this requirement. However, let's say that the marketing department come back and go, hang on, hang on. I only want entries that are in the Europe chapter as we have a campaign that we're running and I, I need to know the social media channels of only the entries in Europe. Well, not a worry. Again, we can come back and guess what? We already have a saved view so we can run our EU plus social media um, saved search. Once that runs, it's gonna give us a result. So we can then do our custom export. And the result in this case is going to be only those entries that are in Europe that have one or more social media platforms. So we've gone from everything in our export to only the relevant information in the export to only relevant entries with social media in the export to only entries in a specific chapter with social media. So you can see how using a combination of searchable fields, saved views, custom exports can save you heaps of time. Okay, so we've looked at ways we can save ourselves time, but what about our judges? This brings us to our next topic, saving judges time. I have observed some programs which simply provide all submitted entries to their judges. And in all fairness, this is totally fine and could even be required as your judges, they are the experts. However, there are some things you could do to save your judges time by giving them only quality entries. This generally means you need to preview all your entries and disregard any that are of bad taste, of poor quality or out of context or requires disqualification. You could do this by setting up a qualifying round for your management team. And this is a great approach when you need a consensus within your team. But what about when your opinion is the only one that matters? So what can you do to qualify entries without using a round of judging? To answer, the answer to that is to use moderation. So what is moderation? This is something we're often asked and program managers are usually quite delighted to learn about this feature and how it can help control entries going forward. There are three types of moderation and they are approved, undecided and rejected. 
By default, all entries are undecided and this is no real effect on the entries. Let's take a look at how we can use tools available to us to moderate entries in preparation for judging with the goal of saving our judges time by removing entries that don't meet the grade. Okay, over here back in the system, we have different ways that we can apply moderation. Now it's only fair to note that you can either apply moderation in bulk or you can do it to individual entries. Let me just reset my view again, just so we can see everything. Okay, so when we look at an entry, the first thing we wanna do is apply, in this case, maybe some uh, moderation in bulk. Now earlier we applied this tag in bulk. Now you can do the same with moderation, but to use this action overflow menu and approve or deny, sorry, reject an entry, you have to choose a checkbox next to an entry. Then you can come through and apply some form of moderation of your choosing. Now this is great and it's very quick and you can see it's instantly done. Just want to remove that, set things back to undecided for the moment. So that's a bulk option. So it's important to note you must choose a checkbox on the left and then use the action menu to apply. However, if you just happen to know that there's an entry in here that needs to be rejected, then you have this overflow menu on the left-hand side of the entry. Clicking on that will allow you to apply moderation to that one entry only, right? reducing the amount of clicks and time required to actually apply something such as the status. Now those two options are great and fast, but they don't allow you to leave any reason as to why you have um, decided to reject an entry if that was the case. So what you can also do is click on the entry name itself. This brings you to an information screen available to all program managers. As we scroll down, we'll see that there are moderation options and a bit further down, there's options to leave comments. So you can now choose to reject the entry from here and leave a comment as to why. So you can see I've got something I've done a little bit earlier. No image does not meet our standards. And these comments, by the way, just a small segue, can be deleted. So you can choose to remove them and these comments are internal only. They're only visible to program managers, not shared with any entrants or judges. Okay, so that's another really good way with the option of leaving a reason as to why you've made that decision. But what's missing here? Well, all the information about the entry itself. So there's another option and this is my preference. When we come back to the manage entries list view, looking at the overflow menu once again, we have a preview option. So it's very easy to get into a single page, scrollable page, uh, version of the entry with all of the entrance responses, as we can see here in my example. With options at the very top to apply moderation. So in this case, I could reject it and I could leave a comment as to why. So there are the options available to you to moderate. Let's take a look at it working in action. I've set up previously a judging round and panel. Now, right now there's nothing in here. I'm going to use moderation to control what is visible and what is not. Taking a quick look at the panel configuration, I have chosen a setting that says only include moderation approved entries. That means that the entry has to be submitted and it has to be moderation approved. So there's two bits of information that an entry must have before it is going to be shown during this round of judging. So I can now come in and I might, in this case, I'm just going to filter for all entries in my Oceana employee submitted saved view because that's what I've got set up at the moment. Okay, now for the sake of time, these four entries, I'm gonna say they are approved. So I'm going to use my bulk action to apply moderation approved. That status of moderation approved means that my panel will update and they will become available to my judges. This one on the other hand, I'm going to make a decision of rejected. So I'm gonna preview it. I'm gonna say it's rejected and a reason why. Oops, no image does not meet our standards. And we'll save the comment. 
Now, when you uh, click on approved or rejected from here, it's instantly applied. You don't have to click save, but a comment, when you write a comment, you'll see that there is a save button. You must click that to commit that uh, comment. Little speech bubble here, clicking on that is going to reveal any comments that have actually been applied by a program manager. Okay, now my five entries that I have in question here have now been moderated. One is rejected, four, four are approved. If I come back to my judge entries view, nothing's appearing here yet. It will eventually, the system takes a couple of minutes to get that information and update. However, I'm just going to force that through quickly just to make sure that we can see all the information that we need to. All right, so in a moment, we'll have a message appearing on screen. I'll just refresh. And we will get our updated list that will feature the approved entries. All right, as there we go. All right, so we have, the, the system is now telling me that it is finished going through and updating all of the um, entries and making sure the right ones are now visible. So if I come back to my judge entries view, there we go, we can see four out of those five and these four are the ones that I have approved. Okay, so there's a nice workflow with some hot tips on what you can do to ensure a high standard of entry for your judges whilst also saving them time by removing entries they simply don't need to be concerned about. You can optimize judges' time even further by tailoring what they actually get to see in the entries. By removing information that is simply not relevant to them, you're providing a clear, uncluttered user interface, which affords judges to concentrate on the task at hand. Whilst your judges are likely never going to know what you have done for them, they should still enjoy their experience, which will increase the likelihood of them signing up again next year. Let's take a look at how we can configure what judges see in a round of judging by configuring our score set. All right, so back into the system. First of all, we click into an entry. I just wanna show you what a judge will see with no changes made. So in my configuration, I have all of these fields over here on the left. First of all, we have the name of the category, the entry name, and then all of the info that's collected within the entry itself. Now in this scenario, I don't want the judge to see all this information you can currently see on my screen. Rather, I want them to see this information down the bottom only, the headline, passion of making a difference, and the leadership initiatives. Everything else is just not relevant. So, I'm gonna to come to my judging menu and click on my score set. I'm gonna click into the relevant score set. Then from the display tab, I'm going to see a list of all of the fields that I have in my system that are available for judges. There's a visibility setting over here on the right. Anything that's ticked means it will be available to a judge to view as long as the entrant has provided an answer. Now in my case, I'm just working with this category today called employee of the year. Everything is currently visible. We can see everything turned on. And all I wanna do is show these fields at the bottom. One, two, three. So I'm going to turn all of them off because this is the quickest way and then just select these three and save. Now instantly, once my score set changes or updates, my entries, as far as how a judge is going to see them, is going to be only those three fields, headline, passion, and leadership. Well, there you go, a few nice little things you can do which could have a big impact with saving your judges time. Let's recap on what we have looked at regarding time-saving ideas for effective program management. We have looked at various options available to you designed to help you save time. This includes looking at how we can customize our list views to suit our working needs making custom fields searchable to help us quickly find entries and users based on known responses. Using a combination of customized list views and searchable fields to help us quickly apply bulk actions such as tagging, 
how to save a search filter so we can use it over and over again, how to create a customized export for reuse and so we don't have to clean up our spreadsheets. Options regarding saving our judges time by moderating entries and cleaning the view for a judge so they can concentrate on the important information in entries when judging. Okay, well this brings us to the end of today's presentation. But before we end, let me see if anyone has actually asked us any questions. All right, let me just check. All right, I've got a couple here. All right, so we have a question. Is everything you have shown today available in all plans? Well, the answer is yes. Everything I've shown you today is available in all plans from our starter plan up to our professional plan. Another question I've got here is, if I customize my columns, will it remain that way or reset the next time I log in? Well, yes, the system does remember how you had your, your columns. So if you should add a custom column and you were to log out and log back in, it will be there the next time. Even if you logged in on another computer, it will still be there. And one last question that I have here by the looks of it. If I have any questions about this later, what can I do? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you can send any question through to us via support at awardforce.com. Our client success team are here, ready and happy to address any questions that you might have. Okay, just checking, see if there are any more. No, all right. Well, okay, I'd like to sincerely thank you for watching today. I hope you've been able to get some great tips and ideas from today's webinar on time-saving ideas for effective program management. Thank you all and see you next time.